And welcome everybody to the stateofchess.com quarter one 2020 edition. 2020, what a year it's been already in so many ways for all of us here uh, on, on planet Earth. But uh, this show is, is going to be focused on the things relating specifically, obviously, to chess.com users and also diving into some big topics today. You can see here directly to my left that uh, we, plan, we plan to get into some stuff today, talk a little bit more directly and as candidly as possible in regards to uh, not just some of the big plans we have coming up, but also the, the things we're currently doing in the community to combat fair play and the growth that chess is seeing online. And unfortunately with that, some of the, uh, some of the things we're facing in regards to cheating and, and what's happening uh, online and, and what we're doing about that and maybe addressing a little bit more on the big picture of what our ultimate goals are for let's say winning the war uh, against against uh, unfair play uh, in chess. So that's a, that's just a quick high level preview of what we're going to get into today. Obviously, those of you who know this show know that it's designed to be a little bit more casual. We have we have laid out some some talking points that uh, we deem critical and, and that we wanted to kind of update. It's it's not all going to be super heavy. Obviously, we will build up to some of the big topics that many people will be tuning in for. But we're going to start off by reviewing what we've done over the last few months, maybe let you know about some features you, you weren't aware of, uh, give you a little bit of a preview, not just in terms of what's coming up uh, in terms of features and product, but also talk a little bit about the big events around the corner. Um, then we're going to dive into our announcement on the premium arena, which is a very good sort of segue um, in into ultimately talking about title players and fair play and what we do to combat cheating, both for professionals and non-professionals, because the premium arena is, is really the first of its kind uh, in terms of uh, a feature that we're now bringing to the premium members on, on chess.com and what we hope that that, uh, that is seen as and, and uh, that we hope that a lot of people consider taking part of it. Uh, then we're going to build in, as I said, to the big topic. So um, I've already got chat up here. We've got, we've got many different, uh, many different, members here hanging out. I see a lot of regular faces and we appreciate that. appreciate you being here. One of the things that the team's going to be doing throughout is looking for some good questions, gathering them. You might want to save them for the Q&A that's going to come up after Fair Play uh, because obviously after giving you a lot of information and talking about some stuff, you might have some questions and uh, we're going we're gonna to really be looking for them then as we get into the Q&A uh, segment. But if you have any good questions and maybe you can't even be here for that long and so you post it, one of our moderators, the team working here with me, uh, might grab that question and we might address it where maybe you could watch it later in a replay. So this show is designed to just kind of connect with everybody. It's an AMA once we get, once we get to that Q&A segment. You guys can feel free to ask some hard-hitting questions and... Uh, and we, we intend to deliver some answers. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to dive in here and, uh, and start going through what, what the last few months have been on a product level and, and go from there. So thanks for being with us. The, the state of chess.com begins. So um, to start out, uh, we, we had the month of January. For those who maybe didn't know, it did happen, right? January came and went. Um, and... Um, so we, we had our first ever Puzzle Battle World Championship. Some of the smaller things that were done are less noticeable by, less noticeable by the puzzle battling community and more about uh, those trying to provide analysis and commentary. Turning, turning what we do into a show is kind of the goal, I guess, that we have with everything here on Chess.com. So we've we made some improvements there. Uh, one of the big things we brought to you is, is making it a lot easier for people to follow their favorite chess personalities and, and commentators and contributors. Obviously, there's our director of content, Sam Copeland. Uh, but of course, you'll, you'll notice that follow button is, has been added pretty much everywhere on the site. Uh, it allows you to uh, instantly engage, make sure you get updated with any news they might write, articles, videos, these sorts of things. Um, the big product update we had was actually much more on the back end this month. We, we made some improvements in terms of how we sort our data on the game archive level. Some Now, I actually had a conversation with Anish Giri yesterday. Hopefully that wasn't private. I don't even know who he was preparing for. He didn't tell me, so I think I can talk about this. Uh, but he actually asked me what the best ways were to search and find people's games on chess.com, specifically if you happen to know someone's username, maybe even if it's a secret account, um, and how you can look that up. And so not only have we made it a lot easier to find things, but in the Game Explorer, it's getting easier and easier as we build out some of our bigger plans for um, for chess tools and, and searching and those sort of things as far as preparation goes. Um, Really not a lot to talk about in January. I want to jump ahead to 
Uh, ultimately, if you're not aware of these particular articles, uh, maybe a team member can grab it and, and share the January one. But um, we do these every month. And with every month, we're always updating you on what's going on on a support level um, so that you're, you feel in the know. And so that we're giving you, you know, maybe more transparency than we have in years previous in terms of the amount of accounts that we're closing, uh, the type of stuff we're dealing with. Um, obviously, we see the big one right there. The third item down is that we actually closed 8,000 plus accounts in January. Uh, for, for cheating. We're going to see that number go up as we get into March, including 11 title players. Um, and uh, I'm obviously already kind of foreshadowing and prefacing that these topics are going to be big today. Uh, and so maybe you'll just start taking note of those numbers as we get into addressing how the title player community currently feels about this, some of the things that are being expressed uh, as far as concern, and some of the things we're doing about it. So um, let's, let's just make note of that. And actually, I think we're going to head, we're going to head into February um, pretty... Uh, Pretty quickly here, yeah. I'm uh, the only thing I do want to note about um, that I made a note in January about puzzle battles. We had the first world championship, how big it got. But some of you may not be aware that actually puzzle battles are coming to iOS very, very soon. It's currently in beta. I played the other day um, on iOS for the first time. So Puzzle Rush kind of took the world by storm. A lot of people really like that feature. Um, and uh, puzzle battles has become where most of our puzzle masters, if you will, spend their time because it gets it makes it a match and they battle against other people. Um, and so it's it's coming to iOS very soon. And uh, maybe maybe I wasn't supposed to say that. I'm, I'm allowed to say that kind of stuff. Anyway, I usually get a long list of things I'm not allowed to say after the show from Eric, who's probably watching. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Uh, but Puzzle Battles coming to iOS, and it's, and it's going to be pretty awesome. So there you go. Let, let's stay on the lighthearted stuff and, and move on to February, um, which um, has been, has been uh, gosh, seems like such a long time ago. Did anybody else feel like we've like lived a whole lifetime since the COVID pandemic? And we're, we're going to get into some of the stuff that we've been you know, experiencing in the online chess community about that. But February, wow, long ago. Uh, one of the things I made a highlight of that I was most excited to see we're, we're kind of openly talking about now is uh, actually what we're working on right here. Um, I actually spent a little bit of time previewing that with some of my uh, title player brethren who play much, much better chess than I do online, uh, guys like Amon Hamilton and Robert Hess, um, and showing them what we're building out as far as the new chessboard. We're completely rebuilding this tool from the ground up to be um, slicker, faster, cleaner, and just, I can't even ex describe that. I, I don't know that I get the best use out of it because I'm already not that fast, but it, I, when this thing starts to hit um, beyond the beta community, I think people are going to be kind of blown away by the type of uh, playing experience that it's bringing. So um, just want to also say again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be talking about product. want everyone to know we see your chatting. Please ask good questions if, if you really want to have a question reviewed. Of course, if people are here to troll and just have fun and be a part of the community, then thanks for being here. But if you're, if you're here and you do have some questions, please go ahead and do it again. We are going to be looking into them and saving them. I'm not going to be responding to them exactly right now until we get into the Q&A. So um, new chess boards are coming. One of the things that we did recently was uh, add the ability to customize not just your home. I talked about that actually in our last state of chess.com. It was quarter four 2019. But you can also now customize which, which page you see first as your home when you first log in. Uh, a lot of people really uh, like that, and maybe you're not aware of it, that some of you maybe really like the Chess Today, which is where we kind of the old index page we've had with news and videos, what latest and greatest stuff is happening in the worldwide chess community. Some of you want to go right to your home, especially because if that's where you kind of organize your chess day, you, you have your daily chess games, you have your, your stuff you want to get into, right? And some of you are like, I only log into chess.com to play Blitz and Bullet and get out of here, and those of you are probably not even watching this show, and that's great, so... Good luck to all of you out there sending positive vibes. But if that's your if that's your homepage of choice, then then good for you. Um, so another big one that uh, that I really like that we did. I've actually used this tool more than others. I'm a bit more of a power user, I guess. But a lot of people don't know that now the analysis tool you can actually load multiple games into a PGN rather than just one. Um, getting into more uh, hardcore functionality that people like to do when they're creating lists of games. You can actually, if you go to chess.com analysis now, maybe you don't know this, you can actually already start saving anything you do uh, and share it instantly, kind of creating a list of your own different games and reviews, things you've worked on, things you've studied. Um, and so you can actually upload in the masses now, and then what it'll do is it'll create a dropdown uh, for you to then dive in if you want to study all the games from a particular tournament or anything like that. And any game you upload can be run through the game report tool, which gives you all those insights. A lot of people like that. So just 
fun little facts, little fact, factoid update, factoid, don't, uh, don't strain it. Okay, and now we get back into uh, more of, our, more of our, our member support update, the quality and control update, we call it. Um, again, we see numbers starting to rise a little bit in terms of the title player closures that happened in, in February compared to January. If you remember, it was up from 11 to 15. But uh, buckle up, because as we get into the later months here, it's, you know, these numbers are going to start to scare you, hence the reason we're here. We would have done this show anyway, so relax, but one of the reasons we're here. Um, so um, we see we're just continuing to share some of the numbers we're doing there, and uh, then we get into March. Let's do it. Let's do it, shall we? Shall we get into March? So uh, March was obviously something that hit us all by storm. In, in the sense that while there had already been, um, you know, things that were, the, you know, different, different countries, different areas of the world were facing uh, more directly in terms of COVID-19 and the spread of what became, I, I think, um, the first global pandemic we've had in the, I guess, since the Internet, maybe. Um, and uh, obviously there have been, you know, large, large diseases that, you know, th we think of things like Ebola, things that have been horrible that have affected, I guess, I guess, smaller areas uh, of the world. Never have we really seen a global sh shutdown like this in my lifetime. And so March, you know, March kind of came with a lot of changes for us in terms of our daily lives and real lives. And it, and it also came with a lot of changes for us on chess.com. Um, you know, a big part of that was just exactly what you see here. And, you know, we were, we're, in some, we were in some ways kind of fortunate in the global chess community to see that while many others were maybe impacted a little bit more negatively in terms of uh, what, they, what they've been asked to do as, as people were asked to shelter in place and go in, indoors, a lot of that meant that people indoors were looking for things to do. And, um, you know, like a lot of chess sites over the last couple months, we saw, we saw a massive increase in traffic. Our, our daily chess games uh, that, we, uh, that we think of in terms of live chess went from roughly 3.5 million to 5 million a day. I can tell you our total games played on the site uh, went from roughly 5 million to now more than 9 million. And you might say, what does that mean? Well, that also includes daily chess games and actually computer chess games. I think a lot of people who, um, who watch this show are already more power users. So you probably don't know that... a a lot of people log into chess.com every day and just play games versus the computer. It's a, it's a big part of what I think a lot of people who aren't as inundated in the chess community think that online chess is. And so, you know, those numbers have gone crazy. Um, we've been doing everything we can to keep up and keep our servers up. And, and for any mistakes that have been made, we apologize. But overall, I think we've held up pretty well. And, um, you know, the numbers have been have been amazing in terms of the amount of people interested in our great game. All of us here are chess enthusiasts, so let's hope that that continues. Uh, but it also has come with some neg negative stuff in terms of that, and, and that's come some of the stuff we're going to get into. Um, we had some other stuff, obviously, going on. Um, the uh, It's actually called other stuff. We had some other stuff. Um, again, we're working a lot harder on our brand new boards, continuing to highlight that. I just can't wait till we start playing with them and streaming them and people have seen, experienced the difference that has been a massive investment by the team working super hard on that uh, to make sure that, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. The bells and whistles are not just what the pieces move. It's everything that goes into communicating to a PGN move list and that we're also building out a back-end version of that move list so that you can instantly convert it to a game report. There's just a lot that goes into it that um, has had, had our whole team kind of working overtime to do something that while we want to give you a lot of insights a lot of cool things you can do on boards and highlight things and build out comprehensive stuff on our server in real time. It, we also need it to be as fast and as clean as possible. And so, you know, we've had work to do there and we've, and we've been doing amazing stuff. And I hope you, hope you are um, eager for that. Um, the other thing that was added is a perfect segue into what we're going to get into and why, um, and why some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today is pretty sensitive. And I'm curious how many title players will tune into this or, or watch afterwards, especially as we get into what has been expressed recently and some things that have happened. But we added some new cheat detection logic. Nothing but a bullet point when it comes to March, right? Just, you know, probably skipped over by many people who may have actually read this. I'm not sure how many people tune into these, but um, I, think, I think, you know, they, they do pretty well in terms of our community wanting to engage with them and see what we're bringing them. But uh, that new cheat detection logic is something that has been in the works for a very long time. And um, we're going to talk about as much as I can in terms of the algorithm while it does represent kind of a proprietary investment. And, you know, it's not necessarily safe to let people who may be considering bad things um, 
to know as much as they can about it. But, I, but we're going to share a lot about this. And I can tell you that this new cheat detection logic has, um, has prefaced what has, what has become and what is becoming um, April. What's interesting is actually the publicized numbers here in March, um, I wonder if they actually relate back to February when they're published. I'm wondering here because this number is much higher with some of the stuff we're going to get into, meaning seven title players makes me feel good suddenly about humanity. Maybe March wasn't as bad, but actually that number is going to be going up um, as we get into some other stuff. So if you're interested and uh, want to check out any more about these particular product reports and some of the stuff we covered, um, I would appreciate if our mods and team, if anyone doesn't mind sharing kind of the links to that, you can just follow the Chesscom username. Um, so the username is Chesscom, and that's if you fo if you click follow and, and follow that account, you'll always be updated each month when we have it. Um, so we talked about uh, some of the different things and uh, what what March kind of put us in is in regards to dealing with COVID, and so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that um, in in just a little bit as we get into premium arena and and uh, title players and all that stuff. Before we do, I want to talk a little bit about what's coming up next. We're still on product here. And so some of the things I'm allowed to talk about in terms of what's coming up next and what has been, I already mentioned puzzle battles are on beta and iOS. Um, we recently launched, it's not live for everyone yet, but key moments on iOS. So I don't know how many of you have um, a, uh, an Apple device, iOS, but uh, and whether we have a preview for the, for the key moments iOS, we can bring up here and show everybody. But the, the, the tools that have been on the web for analysis and game report um, have people have been asking for a very long time to bring them to mobile. Not only are they on mobile, but they're actually, I gotta be honest with you, they're better on mobile than they are on the web as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the, the thing that the mobile currently has that is ahead of the web development team is something called key moments, which after you play a game and you run a game report, these things exist on the web and you can, you can retry mistakes, these sort of things. But I would describe it as it's kind of there for power users who know it is and want to go get it. One of the things about the game report on iOS that's made it super user friendly is we're actually highlighting for you what we determined were the biggest moments in the game in terms of when the wildest swings happened. You were much better and you made a big mistake and, and here was that exact key moment. So it's like a coach kind of telling you, hey, this was the key moment where you blew it or vice versa. This was the key moment because you played a great move and the evaluation went from equal to plus two or three, right? So if you don't have an iOS device, one, I'm apologizing because it's not on Android yet, but it will be coming. Uh, but if you do, I really encourage you to not dismiss the game report button. I know a lot of people like to play and then instantly hit rematch. Um, excuse me, taking some water here. But I, I would encourage you to, uh, to slow down and, and give the key moments a try, give it a think. So that's a product that's coming your way. Um, moving on, I'm, uh, I'm going to continue to... To talk a little about what's coming. So one thing that's coming very soon, we obviously have a very big streaming community. A lot of a lot of people here watch guys like Hikaru Nakamura, the Chess Bras, Alexander Botez, uh, Levy Rosman, who just hosted Title Tuesday before this and beyond. Uh, we've been trying to build out as much as we can for for the experience directly on Chess.com to be what those users want on Chess TV. I, I said that as I'm looking at those chatting in Chess TV here. Um, Things that benefit both the, the chatters, both directly on Chess TV and the streamers, building out donations to be able to be made directly. Uh, and eventually that may or may not be coming with some sort of uh, other, other things that are comparable to how people donate, like you know tips and things like that. Um, we're building out some other uh, really cool features that people have on Chess TV to make it uh, more interesting for them to follow. Obviously, this is in the interest that you know the Chess.com community, many of them like to be on Chess.com while they're watching. This isn't taking anything away from those of you watching on YouTube or Twitch right now. We see you and we love you guys. I think we engage with you uh, as often, if not more sometimes, than the Chess TV chat during our big events. But there are a lot of people that have expressed, like, I want to be able to watch and do puzzles, and I wanted to be able to watch and do this, and they don't want to necessarily leave the chess.com experience, and that is our job to kind of serve them first, right? And so we're working on that, um, and we're pretty excited about where that's coming. So for those watching who are streamers and beyond, you'll, you, you'll be wanting to take note of that. Um, okay, um, let's see here. We, uh, the other things that have been happening and have been going on a lot, we talked about new board play, we talked about a new versus computer that's coming that's very popular. Um, like we said, more than, more than three minimum, sometimes more than four million games are played just versus the computer a day, which is, 
Again, I always find that shocking as someone who I think like a lot of people watching kind of just wants to play live chess against other human beings. But there are a lot of a lot of people that enjoy chess that don't want to do that. And the numbers, um, you know, speak to that for us. And so we're doing everything we can to make to make uh, more versus computer games um, even better. So gonna, we're working on that. So next, getting into the things that are coming soon on the on the event side. So we talked about product. Um, the biggest news I think that has been out there in regards to what's coming up next has been the online Nations Cup. Uh, the cooperation we have with FIDE has been honestly super exciting about this. This is this is going to be one of the most prestigious events we've ever held. I would I would argue we've had a lot of very prestigious events with the best players in the world, but it, but this is the first time we've ever done something like this with FIDE. Uh, to to have their sort of um, designation in an event that's a t of a team nature like Pro Chess League. The only other time, obviously, last year we held the official random World Chess Championship, uh, the the final that was held in Oslo between Magnus Carlsen and our eventual uh, World Official Random Chess Champion and Wesley So. But this event is. Um, is going to be like nothing we've ever done in terms of a five-day event with with that big of a prize fund. Um, obviously, it's one hundred eighty thousand dollars over a very very short span. So you could argue maybe the richest online chess event we've ever held here uh, in terms of um, you know the the Fisher Random event took place over several months, and the lineup itself is obviously uh, pretty frightening if you happen to be someone who's worried about playing against China or how about every other team, right? If, you're, if you weren't aware of this, this, this event coming up is, it's got our whole team's focus right now. We've got China, uh, we've got Team Europe, led by Maxime Bache de Grave, Levon Aroni, and Anish Giri. Uh, Gary Kasparov is captaining Team Europe, and that's been, I think, one of the least talked about, maybe most exciting points. Everyone here is an absolute fan of Gary Kasparov, right? I mean, I say right, <laughs> because you're talking about the 13th world champion, still in many people's eyes, the greatest chess player of all time. Um, and so for him to kind of get involved in such a prestigious event, and again, an event that you know, the reason it, it kind of prefaces after us talking about March is that we could argue an event like this maybe doesn't happen uh, without the pandemic we're dealing with in terms of COVID-19. And um, again, it's not that's not a good thing, right, that the coronavirus happened. And obviously there's been so much impact that has been super negative um, and, and, you know, people getting sick and, and people dying, you know, around the world. Um, but as far as the as far as what the opportunity was there for the chess world to make sure we still offered those fans something to cheer for, something to root for, which people need during a time like this. This is the kind of event that probably doesn't happen without COVID, and and, and we're very excited to to see what it can become. Um, that team Russia, led by Jan Napomnichi, who of course um, was leading the candidates before it was paused uh, for the uh, for the COVID nineteen pandemic. And then you get into Team USA, and you know I'm gonna I'm obviously gonna be commentating on this event along with some other uh, expert commentary. But uh, you know, it's not my job to be rooting for for Team USA. But certainly those are some faces and friends of mine and people that I grew up with and have known. So it's hard not to. You've got Captain John Donaldson, who has very very often captain our Olympia team uh, in the over the board chess Olympics, if you will. And so uh, this is going to be pretty exciting to see what the big three, as we call them, right, that the Fabi, Hikaru, Wesley, So uh, team does in terms of uh, leading Team USA. And then we have Team India, who, you know, huge fan favorites online. Vishy Anand was joining us for commentary. Vidya Gujarati streaming today for the Title Tuesday. Uh, Vishy held a charity simul for COVID, and he's been, he's been pretty excited. And then you've got uh, Vladimir Kromnik listed as a captain here for Team India, which is... Uh, also pretty amazing when you have the 13th and 14th world champions, Kasparov and Kromnik, involved as captains. And then you've got the rest of the world team, which is kind of funny because, um, you know, these are, these are also some of the biggest, strongest players, maybe some favorites in the eyes of Rapid, right? When you look at uh, Ali Reza Faruja there, especially flying that FIDE flag right now as he uh, left his home country of Iran and uh, now, now living in France. And where that goes, no one knows. But Ali Reza Faruja will be, will be helping along with Tamor Rajabov, world number nine. Uh, the, the controversy that was Rajabov not playing in the candidates did not prevent him from accepting his invitation to compete in our event. And we were very, very excited about that. So shout out to Timor. And uh, again, so this is, this is probably the biggest event if you were looking to mark your calendar for something. There you have it. Uh, I want to remind everybody, too, that unfortunately sort of being overshadowed by that from time to time has been that the European Online Chess Championship is also going to be one of the one of the first of its kind uh, in terms of what they've been putting together because this will have open registration for everybody. Um, unlike the Invitational that is the Online Nations Cup, the, the European Online Chess Championship will have prizes 
uh, rewarded, uh, almost like uh, what we're eventually going to talk about. There you see on the right the premium arena. You can register for the European Chess uh, the, the European Online Chess Championship. And if you didn't know that was coming up, you should consider giving this, giving this link a, uh, a read and, and consider registering. The full schedule can be found there. Uh, th this is the first major event like this we've done that has a paid entry for members online organized by a third party. Chess.com isn't necessarily uh, by its nature in the paid entry business. And we're going to talk about that as we talk about Premium Arena. But when, when third party partners have approached us, uh, like the organizing group from Norway and, and FIDE, uh, the Fisher Random World Chess Championship, and here the European Online Chess Championship, you know, we do have a platform and we're very interested in giving them the opportunity to see what kind of members they can get involved playing in their events like this. So um, consider, consider uh, signing up and getting involved in that and, uh, and give it a try. So Last but not least, I'm going to just preview that we have the premium arena coming up here. Uh, what we're going to dive into after the break is what exactly inspired us to do this event? What exactly are our goals behind this event? How do we view it? And also, maybe some of you just didn't know that this was happening and that if you are a premium member on chess.com, you for the first time ever without any paid entry. This is not requiring an extra paid entry uh, like Fisher Random World Championship, like the European uh, Online Chess Championship. This is basically a perk of, of the premium membership. And we're going to talk about that and everything that's coming up with it. Um, after we take a pretty short break. And right after that, we're going to dive into the more sensitive topic. So for those of you that are, that are with us here, um, we've got, we've got uh, a lot of you. I, 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 don't, I haven't really been following too much. Shout out to the team who's working to help make sure that we're, we're staying in touch with questions coming in. Uh, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to talk about the premium arena and from there dive into uh, some of the biggest topics of the day discussing title players, uh, their current, their state. Uh, we list it as a topic because what's going on with them right now during COVID-19 and what exactly are we doing to provide opportunities for title players and make sure that uh, everything is also kept fair and safe and clean uh, here online. So thank you for being here. Don't go anywhere. The state of chess.com quarter one edition for 2020 continues after a very short break.
And welcome back, everybody, to the stateofchess.com quarter one 2020 edition here. We continue to roll through. We've talked a lot so far about uh, the products and features updates. Remind you, if you follow the main chess.com username over on chess.com, you will, you will get those updates and articles as they come out. We do look at them very closely as far as the amount of comments we get, engagement, and, and people just talking about uh, features and, and uh, maybe things they want to see and, things, and uh, things they think we're missing. So continue to do that, and uh, hopefully you'll follow those articles and look forward to some of the product stuff I previewed. So um, time to dive into a, a, huge, a huge announcement we made. Very honestly, we're very excited about it. We, we know that it's different than anything that has really ever been offered online in terms of the unique way um, that the premium arena will, will operate. Um, and we wanted to talk a little bit about our goals there. So first of all, we've, we've considered ways to give benefits to premium members in terms of play for a long time. And what I mean by that is if, if you talk about the chess.com model, why are we here? What are we doing, right? And so obviously people play online for free and, and people love to play chess and that's what most of our members do. Some members eventually get to kind of asking themselves that magical question at times or at least more than once, right? Which is, why did I lose that chess game, right? And we like to think that that's really what, what we do is about in terms of inspiring the desire to learn, right? Why did I lose? Or if you watch a show or an event, you wanna go premium to get access to unlimited puzzles or videos or lessons, right? And we have always been very hesitant despite many people telling us and pushing us with kind of, you know, the unique and fortunate position we're in with so many members, why don't we do, you know, cash events or make, you know, charge people entry fees. And, and to be totally frank, you know, the reason they said it, because it seems like an opportunity that premium members who get unlimited access to the site for life for whatever, whatever the annual fee is, you know, um, they, they, uh, they don't ever, you know, invest any further in the site, right? So why not create events that they can pay for? But, but we strongly believe that that's really not what we want to do. We're not trying to to add more entry fees onto premium members who are already supporting the site. Yes, we've engaged in partnerships with FIDE, right? We did the Fisher Random World Chess Championship because they approached us, right? Or, you know, this upcoming European online chess championship. And I'm not going to lie, there, there, are, there are discussions and people have asked about, would you ever consider this if we had a major partner, you know, and a big opportunity for, for a major online event? But it's not part of our goal with with. The, the regular premium offering. And that's why this, this event is not really designed to ask current premium members to pay an entry fee. So I understand that in some ways, and that's part of the show is, is just being, some, I always stick my foot in my mouth, but just being totally open and honest with you guys, like you may say I'm trying to spin it, but that's really not the goal. The goal is not to say we're getting more out of our premium members, right? The goal is we do see this as a way to give back and offer a perk for the premium membership that you should be paying for because you want to learn. You should be upgrading to premium because you want access to a particular lesson series by Anna Rudolph or whoever, right? Or you want unlimited puzzles. Like that is the ultimate goal. And we're not asking current premium members that have been forever to pay anything for this, right? So yes, you do need to be a premium member to play. And for those who are not premium members, uh, you know, that is a requirement, right? But this is not a pay to play event. This is, if it was, it would be something we asked all premium members to pay for. We do see this as something we're doing to give back to the current premium membership base. And with that, we believe if someone upgrades, maybe if they did get inspired temporarily to upgrade for this event, that the only reason they're going to keep their membership is not because they're winning hundreds of dollars in this event. I just, I don't think that that's going to happen because the only way it might happen at lower levels is with cheating. And we're going to catch you if you cheat, so don't do it, right? So our goal is that the premium membership is there to inspire people when they know that they want to get better. And this is a perk, an additional perk that we've never offered before to, to allow premium members the opportunity to win cash. And, and that is the way we see it. And we also see it as something for title players. I want to bring up our prizes and talk a little bit about the specifics of our prizes. I can, I can scroll through here and, and we, can, we can bring it up in full view. There we go right there. And, and just talk about the other thing that it does is it does help bring back something that we know the community has been asking for really since Pro Chesley took over in January, right? Last year, we launched an event like no other, the Arena Kings. And if you look at that premium arena logo, you'll actually see it almost looks like an Arena Kings logo kind of morphed, right? And And... Our goal with this was, look, we've always wanted to do an event that was about giving back to premium members to add this sort of premium perk. Right now, during the, the, the pandemic of COVID-19, we are experiencing record traffic. And if there were ever an opportunity to do it, 
now is a time. So that's one of the reasons we finally pushed this idea forward. Again, it is not pay to play. It's not something we're asking premium members to pay for on top of it. It's an additional feature that you have an opportunity to take advantage of. Maybe you have a good day and win that under 1200 section, you know, um, and let's bring back our prizes in full view to, to talk specifically about that. Again, you can win an under 1200 section and under 1000 section, and you're going to be competing mostly against people in your rating because for people who know how our, our arena algorithm works, you know, when we first launched it, a lot of people felt like, I actually don't like this. Like, you know, we, you know, arenas that have existed on chess cube before or lead chess before were like, Hey, I, you know, just whoever's at the top of the standing should play. Well, the problem is then toward the end, you might get a lot of Hikaru Nakamura versus a 1200 which is not something that maybe the fans want to see or even that Hikaru wants, really, right? Let, and maybe the 1200 wants one opportunity to play Hikaru, but I don't think a 1200 wants to lose to Hikaru 50 times in a row, if you ask me. And so one of the things that when we structured our arena, I always described it as it was more of a Mario Kart idea. We have an algorithm that is designed to weight player strength before it weights current standings. So the first choice when it pairs you based on who's available is to look for somebody who's within your rating class. So if you, if you take a step back and look at this event, you're talking about an opportunity to compete mostly against players within your prize group for some cash that just comes as a perk for already being a premium member. And, and in addition to that, as I mentioned, Arena Kings, you see that with streaming, people have an opportunity to win even more. So for those who have been already playing Arena Kings, these are actually larger prizes than they were getting in Arena Kings, right? You had Hikaru Nakamura and, you know, Ali Reza and Georg Meyer and Jan Lubnick. I, I go down the list of title players that were regularly streaming to win cash in Arena Kings. And those weekly prizes, if I remember, were something like 125 for first over a season. You know, and, and our idea was to give back even more to them as well. So not only is this a premium arena uh, for, for premium members for the first time, but it's also an opportunity for title players to continue to earn a living online, something that we're always trying to create an opportunity to do so. And um, for those who stream, not to say that you have to be a title player to stream, you could even stream and win the under 1200 prize if you look at that. That could be $200. If you're streaming and you're in 1100 and you win first, that's 200 bucks. That's more than most people make on Twitch in a day. I know everyone hears the, the sexy stories of like a $5,000 donation, but FYI, most people don't make $200 a day on Twitch, usually much, much less. So, um, so anyway, so that's how that works, right? And that's how we're seeing it. And I'm aware that it's my job, you know, and, and, and the, the way that, um, you know, that our, our company works, I, I try to be out there and, and respond to you, the community, and, al and always give you everything that we have in terms of being honest about our mistake, mistakes and honest about where we're coming from. And, and we really believe that the premium arena might be something that could be like nothing else before it. And that if you are a premium member, you should not upgrade for the premium arena. I'm telling you that. You should upgrade because you want to get better at chess and chess.com's offering may provide you an opportunity to do so with the features and tools we build. But if you're a premium member, this is a perk and something we're doing to give back to you. And I hope that you'll consider playing. And if you want to stream with it, this is your push over the edge to, to, to launch your streaming chess career. Obviously, we love when people have been using, are using our site and, and having fun doing so, streaming. Um, maybe this is the push, the push for you to do so. So that's how we see Premium Arena. Um, and again, title players have an opportunity to win money like they were previously in Arena Kings, and we hope they continue to do that. So on that note, that's Premium Arenas. That's our goal. That's the mission statement here from Mr. Big Chess, as I've been, as I've been called. I don't really like that nickname. Will you guys stop hurting my feelings? Just kidding. Uh, but Chief Chess Officer is made up too, so I don't, I don't really care what you call me. Anyway, it's time. It's time to, to move in from the Premium Arena. I talk about what it does for title players and the perks it does there, why it is kind of a marriage of the Arena Kings, to talking about title players in general. And... Um, we obviously have already prefaced the fact that we've seen record numbers in terms of people playing online. One of the shocking things that happened over this last month was that we also saw a record number of title players sign up, meaning the way a title player signs up on our site, just, to, just so you know the process, is they sign up, they have to send in a selfie of them with a date and says chess.com on it, so it's a selfie so we know it's them, along with a picture of their passport or some sort of ID, right? Um, and you'd be surprised how many people try to Photoshop uh, and, and get a free diamond membership as a title player. We got to write a blog about that one day and show the best Photoshops of people trying to do identity theft. I'm, I'm legit. Someone make a note about that, please. Um, and so title players uh, have been signing up in the masses as well. 
And that's always shocking to us because you would think like, aren't all the title players already playing online? But the chess world is so huge and the chess world's legacy has been beyond all of us online here, right? They've, you know, the chess world has been around before chess.com exists and it'll be around long after the internet goes down when we all go dark and John Connor takes over and leads us to freedom, right? I mean, chess has been around forever. And so the amount of title players signing up has also been amazing. A lot of them have been taking advantage of the offerings we have. We turned our title Tuesdays into a weekly thing, you know, to, to give back even more. We're we're launching the premium arena. Uh, we increased the prize funds in Title Tuesday, as you saw. So not only did we increase the prize fund, but it's now weekly instead of monthly. Um, and then not just the first Tuesday, but every Tuesday. Uh, there's more coming in terms of events that I have been sworn to secretly see on some of those, so I'm not going to say it yet. But we have plans to increase our offering overall and, and things that have already existed, but maybe unifying and making them bigger, badder, and greater. Uh, bigger, better, faster, stronger. Thank you, Daft Punk. But... There's also been a lot of title players who have experienced the pandemic, if you will, of online cheating. And, and forgive me if that's an inappropriate term right now, but I would argue that we've been facing our own kind of pandemic. Um, and um, before, I, before I start talking about that, I want to bring up an open letter that was sent to chess.com. Uh, we threw this on our own template, but this was a Word document that was sent to us by International Master. It was forwarded to us by Beglar Jobaba, International Master, but it was signed by many title players, including some of the world's best. Um, and to be quite honest, a few names that um, maybe maybe they're more familiar with our fair play process than some of their peers know, if that's, if that's the most appropriate way I can say that about some of the names on there and for those listening. But what I want to highlight is that there's a lot on that list that we're actually already doing that people don't know. I know that that's not a totally legible thing for you, but in my effort to be totally open and address this in a way that I hope gets shared... And I hope people talk about it. I hope the criticism and questions come. They always do anyway, so I don't need to hope for it. But I also hope that there's maybe some understanding and insight into some things we haven't shared before. And that's what we're going to start doing now. So before I dive into our fair play and proctoring, I just want to be totally open here. I'm, I'm a little nervous about this. And I don't know why. I don't get nervous that often anymore. But I suddenly felt myself getting the butterflies. And I was once told by somebody, whenever you're nervous, just say so. So Danny's a little nervous right now. And not because... Um, not because anything that, that I'm going to talk about is something I'm not supposed to talk about, I hope not, um, and reveal too much of what we do, but because the truth is what I'm about to talk about is near and dear in the hearts of a lot of personal friends of mine. I have, I have fielded a lot of very tough phone calls and emails over the last couple of weeks, and we are going to follow up today's show with an open letter to the global chess community, and I'm going to tell you that right before this show, I received a phone call from a dear friend who acknowledged to me that his student had cheated and admitted and asked me what the process was for his second chance. Uh, last week, I dealt with more high-profile closures in terms of cheating, things that were happening um, that, would, that would shock you. We have closed three north of 2,600 GMs and many people below that over the last week. And we made some breakthroughs. I, I want to come back to the March article that we talked about. Um, and um, talk about what I, I meant with that. I'm not, we are not going to get into names. So if those of you start screaming in chat and contrary, we, we have been publicly outed by some people who publicly outed themselves for cheating because they decided they would take the, the crying wolf approach and, and, and either call us liars or threaten suits and lawsuits and those sort of things. And some of you who are old school members here in the online chess community know who I'm talking about. People that have said directly or accused us of lying and threatened lawsuits, and I can say that nothing became of that, and so you can do the math. We have been taking a lot of heat by that open letter from title players, and in some cases, um, we have been specifically called out for not acting fast enough. I'm still not going to talk about names, but what I'm going to say is this. The improvements we made in terms of the, the, added, the added cheat detection here um, have recently led to some, to some breakthroughs that while we will continue to honor our promise of acting conservatively, if anyone in, in chat has a link, if you would, to our, to our fair play and cheating on chess.com that has our testimonials from guys like Maxime Bache the Grave, Eric Hansen, John Bartholomew, people that we have invited to see under the hood and have given us their endorsement. You're also going to see a link there to a letter from the head of statistics at Harvard that says that chess.com has been audited and that as much as chess.com uh, can as long as as much as smoking can be proven to cause cancer, chess.com's cheating catches cheaters, but also acts conservatively. And the reason that's important to us is because as much as it always feels like we need to act in the moment, I got I gotta be totally honest and give news. 
I have zero interest in defaming or destroying the reputation of any title player or human being on the planet. And our, our policies operate in that we may be at sometimes criticized for acting too slowly. I'm aware that our company might lose many PR battles along the way of being seen as acting too slow, but you will know that when we pull the trigger, not only are we ready to go to court, but also we're not, we're not looking back. Despite threats and things that have come our way, you can also be sure that we're gonna continue to, to win the war while losing many battles in the sense that we're not gonna stop investing and in creating opportunities for professionals online. We're, if anything, we're increasing it. And, and we're not doing it in, in one-off kind of splash big prize funds. We're doing it every week and giving every title player an opportunity to do something, not just with streaming, not just with Title Tuesdays, but with other Grand Prix series we have coming. Again, I, I won't say more, Nick, don't worry. But I'm getting into it because this isn't about me defending against Open Letter. This is about what I want to start diving into. I'm going to tell you as specifically as I can what it is that we do, is that this is a very difficult topic because when you close a young, talented, you know, person of any country who may actually be a very strong player, but have maybe have given in to water cooler talk and people saying, don't worry, chess.com can't catch you anyway, they were wrong. When you, when you close a title player who, even if we want to morally judge why they did it, might literally be fighting to feed his family because of what's happening with COVID-19 or because of other lack of opportunities. It's not right, and we do act, but we also don't judge and create a second chance opportunity with, with, with suspensions required for prize events and things like that because of that. When you, when you close anybody, even if they're just a, a, a regular member without a reputation in the chess community, you don't know what anybody's dealing with, their demons in their life, right? Be kind because you, you can't rewind. My mom always used to say that. And the point is be kind because you don't know what other people are dealing with. And that is the policy we operate. So people who wanna judge usually behind an anonymous veil that we're doing a wrong thing, I want you to know we're doing the right thing and we're acting and we're closing people for, 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 for violations. And when we do, it's not easy for anybody. And sometimes it leads to the kind of heartfelt conversations that are very difficult to deal with between a parent talking about a child who came clean, or like I said, a friend of mine uh, with a student or a fellow title player. And so what is it? So that's, so I've gotten my nerves out of the way. I want you to know, like, this is a very sensitive issue, but we're not dumb to it. And, and with some of the algorithms we've broken through with recently, we are about to close more title players than we ever have before. And we, every, everybody gets a review, and so that's some of the process we're getting into. But I want to describe to everybody before we invite the, invite the option that we're going to at the end of the show to understand a little more about what we do. So here are some of the things that people who have signed our NDA and taken that course, guys like John Bartholomew and others and, and people that know what we do, they know even more than the high level points I'm going to give you, but I'm going to describe as best I can. So... Chess.com's fair play process. What is it that we do? So our team of fair play professionals, we use statistical methods. And the reason I want to emphasize that first is to always remind you that no matter what it looks like, we are never reacting to a mob mentality. We are acting with DNA evidence in terms of the blueprint of the game so that we could stand behind this legally. In March, we, we reviewed more than 90 million. That's actually, that's actually getting into the record levels of how many games and the fair play team has been working overtime. Um, to date in March, including some that we received, we have received more than 300 written confessions from title players, including grandmasters, including grandmasters north of 2,600. And I won't get into more specifics than that. So despite the public outcries you might hear, despite people being frustrated at times uh, that we acted too slowly, despite even the very, very few cases, and again, always in total transparency on stateofchess.com, and one that was on Reddit recently, I would argue that the fact that we were able to acknowledge that we were wrong about a specific case speaks more highly to the fact that you should trust us when we hold to our guns and don't reopen somebody. If anything, acknowledging the very, very few times we've been wrong over the last nine, 10 years might speak more truthfully and highlight to the fact that we are ultimately still humble. We don't claim to be perfect. We just claim to be doing our best. And if we mess up and a proper review is given, you will be given a chance at a second chance and you will be reopened. Hopefully that speaks more truthfully to the fact of what you can discern. The same manual review and appeal process is given to anybody who challenges us. And if we don't reopen them, what does that say? Um, and then and coming back there to our training processes um, on the... Um, on our fair play bullet points there, let's bring that up for everybody again. Our training process is that not only are we working within, within the internal group that we have um, that, uh, that works on this stuff, 
but we also are working with top agencies. So I, I jumped ahead a little bit um, to talk about the internal training process we have for the current team. So the current team recently expanded is of nine full-time team members. I'm only listing the full-time team members. I am not listing part-time, um, maybe overseas who we're not allowed to call full-time, maybe, maybe you know, salary. It just, it, I'm listing full-time people who work to improve algorithms around the clock to protect the experience of our members on chess.com and two titled players who are, who are full-time manual review experts and then many others that contribute, including yourself, uh, yourself, yeah, you, you, you can know yours truly uh, and Grandmaster Robert Hess. Uh, as far as people that are in the inner circle of knowing and, and reviewing this stuff and have been improving our own review of not just looking at what the data, what the DNA is telling us and what the actual chess is telling us uh, for years. During events, and this is, this is back to the open letter that was said, and now I'm getting into it. The open letter addressed pretty directly some suggestions. What it doesn't know is that we're actually already doing the majority of that. The open letter even acknowledges, and I'm speaking to the title players who signed it, that within a reasonable view of what's possible to put people on camera, the open letter acknowledged in a Title Tuesday with more than 1,000 people, how could we reasonably be expected to put everybody on camera? One, that would hardly be fair to them. A lot of people have slow internet, right? Um, and if, you know, there's you know, no reason, I mean, it should be random. It shouldn't just be we pluck people to put them on camera, right? That would be profiling. And, um, but we do work with people, not only in terms of getting them on camera, requiring a view of their room, asking about their device, asking if they're alone. Also, we get screen share in cases. And I'm going to say that there have been cases where people were asked to do this and they immediately quit. Without naming names, you should know that as a title player community. You should also know that the players are, as I said, not only are they selected for random observation, but yes, also, if a player has been proven to not cooperate, they will then essentially be profiled, but not profiled. They will be asked to say, okay, well, it was random at first, but now that you won't cooperate, you're not allowed to compete again until you're able to do this this way, the way we want it. So a lot of people don't know we are doing that, um, in addition to the, to the very strong grandmasters and title players we've been closing over the last month. Um, and we're, we're working all the time, not just with top agencies, but with audits. We talked about the, the written letter we have from a uh, uh, head of statistics at Harvard, but we have others and, and we have been audited and we are continuing to get training. Uh, we're, we're taking notes from what other esports industries do in terms of how they proctor people. There is literally almost nothing that gets more of an investment and is leading to breakthroughs all the time than you know, as far as a back-end tool, right? Yes, we're working on a new board, and there's a lot of developers on that, and we, we invest in things you can see that are public-facing. But it, it is beyond, to say, a very serious um, focus for us. Um, and so the one of the reasons we're able to do what we do, and this is going to be the last thing I'm going to leave you with before we take a break and hopefully get into some of your questions, why, why do we claim to be doing... Um, as good of a job as we, I, I, again, I don't want to say we're claiming to be doing a good job or the best job. I, I think we're doing a, a great job within the means and investment that we can measure. And I think we can always do better. Um, but the, the main thing we're doing is trying to prepare to, to not just deal with individual cases, but our goal and our investment is to say the biggest pie in this guy thing is to eventually kind of end cheating at least in terms of title player events, a new person coming along who cheats one time or people who, you know, get given to temptation randomly. We, we obviously close accounts in that realm of the thousands every month, right? But we do believe that there is a potential future where in the process of us losing some PR battles and, and doing, th but doing things privately and conservatively, not in the open public way that some people would love to do uh, and, and scream cry, crying wolf, the truth is over time, less and less cheaters will be playing in our events because those who have tried to slander us and threaten suits, but then not, they're not playing anymore. People that won't admit, they're not playing anymore in our events. And people that did had to serve, in some cases, multi-year bans before they were given a second chance and then are forever proctored even, clo even more closely as they should be. Um, and we do not operate in a third chance opportunity. We operate in a second chance opportunity and the third time is a ban for life. And does that mean that... that um, we're going to start publicly saying names to scare other people. I don't believe in that form of capital punishment because I don't believe it's right to slander or defame a particular individual in order to make a point to others. But I will say we do believe that over time, as, as people start to know things and know, and know who and is not involved in the things, is that we can play a capital punishment game that people will be more scared. And part of my goal of this and telling my personal stories that I said made me nervous about 
you know, the, 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 the friends and the kids and the other title players is to hopefully address this head on and let people know that if you are told that we're not catching cheaters, you're wrong. And I'm asking you to not do it. And you should know that, again, you're right, that everyone is right, that we might act conservatively in a way that gets people frustrated on an individual event level. But we're not going to stop creating opportunities and events for those players who are frustrated. They can rest assured in that. And the moment we have enough to close, it will be closed and they will not come back without the promise that they'll be clean to you forevermore and never have a second chance again if they go, if they, if they cheat again or they won't be playing on the site. And our hope is that rumors do spread just privately in the sense that don't, don't do it, right? It's wrong. And again, no, no matter the level, the auto ban features that we made, that was part of the cheat detection logic. I guess I forgot to say that. Uh, Gerard, head of cheat detection, wanted me to do that in the sense that we are now closing. We had One of the algorithmic breakthroughs is we've been able to start closing with certainty. People might say, like, when you say you're now closing a thousand more accounts every week, aren't you saying, Danny, that, that was a thousand cheaters that you weren't getting to a week before? I am kind of saying that, but we're also getting 40,000 new accounts a day, sometimes repeat. And you can read the, what I'm saying the other way and saying we weren't closing those accounts because we weren't sure. That means the algorithm breakthroughs we have have made have now now we're closing a thousand more that we'd be ready to go to court over. And that hopefully inspires a little bit of confidence. So, again, um, I'm here to both acknowledge the mistakes that we have been conservative at times and cheaters have gotten away with it for longer than I would have liked. I said it and it's true. We have also openly acknowledged at times where we've made mistakes and let them back. I hope you see that as a testament to the integrity of what we're doing and that we're willing to be wrong despite the rumors and not a testament that we're, that we're doing this the wrong way. If you consider how many of them are being closed, given reviewed and not being given a chance back. And then also we're not going to stop investing in the prizes that we are and the open letter you sent title players has been received and everybody who's considering playing in the premium arena, you should know that it's even easier for us to catch cheaters who are not, by definition, having dedicated their life to the game and they're supposed to match up with engines. Is that my way of scaring you? You're darn right it is. Please don't cheat. We're going to catch you and we're going to catch you faster than you think and you're going to lose out on the legal rights to have your account, which you agreed to when you signed up. So we're saying all this in the, in the essence to say we love you. We do this. We're very fortunate to be where we are, to have the domain name we do, to have the model we do, to have the team we have, frankly, the people we have, the love and our investing in what we are. And we are, we are seeing the kind of trajectory that hopefully changes the chess world for all of us forever. But it has also led to this unfortunate pandemic where young people, um, and, and, I, and I'll even share that it was said by a, by a, a psychological expert, and um, I, I've observed this behavior from other people that, you know, during COVID, people have been doing some silly things at times. It, maybe it has led to some idle minds doing things they wouldn't otherwise. But um, we're, we're, we're catching everybody. We're acting, and we're not going to stop investing in it. And hopefully you take this as our, as our word to know that I'm not, we're not claiming to be, to, to be not even close. If I told you the amount of things we'd like to break through so that we know we can catch cheaters, not just in games, but in moves, we are working on it all the time with our, with our, um, with our awesome, awesome team. But we're also not going to stop in the process of investing along the way, even when we know sometimes we act more conservatively than you would like. But at least you can know when we do close, we're not going to look back and we have your back. And so on that note, there's been a lot of questions here. I understand that I'm going to have to continue to answer for some of the things that have been said and our mod team have been pulling it. So I hope that I hope that you hear the message. Um, it's going to be followed by a message sent out to all of our members today. And we hope that um, those who are looking for amnesty, which is going to be offered, which is an acknowledgement before our algorithmic breakthroughs start catching everyone even faster, that you might even take that opportunity um, in the sense that we're, we do give people a second chance anyway when they, when they admit. So to us, our offering amnesty is not really any different than that. It's just allowing you to be more proactive if that's something you want. So that's something we're going to be doing um, with today's stateofchess.com show. So spoiler alert, that's a big news that we're going to be sending out. If you've ever done this, now's your opportunity. Um, and on that note, we're going to take a break. When we come back, it's going to be Q&A time, time to get to your questions. I see the chat's going crazy. Uh, much love and, uh, and appreciation for hearing out the spiel there. We told you it was going to be a stateofchess.com a little different than others. And when we come back, I'm going to get to your questions and give some final thoughts. We'll wrap up. And uh, without any further ado, I need to lubricate my voice muscles because this has been a lot of talking. We'll be back in a couple minutes.
And welcome back, everybody. The state of chess.com, quarter one of the year 2020. Can we just give 2020 back? Anybody else into that? Can we just like send it back and skip? I might be into that. Um, the year 2020 rolls on, whether we like it or not, and uh, the quarter one coverage continues here, addressing not just some, some of the stuff we always do on this show, give you some updates, talk about product. We do usually get into at least one or two sensitive topics facing our community in that particular time, uh, at that particular time, in that particular quarter. Uh, but this, this episode, if you're just tuning in, got into some very sensitive stuff, uh, talking about cheating, uh, what we're doing about it as it relates to a number of different things. There's a reason we kind of stacked uh, the, the show the way we did, talking about the premium marina opportunities we're applying and, or, or providing everyone as a new premium perk. Um, and uh, the questions and worries that have come in about cheating and how it relates to that. We're going to get into some of it. Some of you asked it in chat. I've got them right here. The title player community and their worries about it uh, as games increase online. And then, of course, just what, we're, what we do in general. And, and um, our talk about that will, will, be, will be shared on, on our different digital media platforms. That's a fancy word for things like YouTube and Twitch and Facebook. You can see it later if you just tuned in or just watch the video on demand uh, on Twitch if, if you uh, are already a subscriber there. So... Um, on that note, it's time to break into the more the questions that were s surrounded or relating directly to this fair play talk. Uh, and um, some of them will open up doors of us talking a little more about the technical stuff as much as we can. And, um, and without any further ado, let's do it. So thank you to all that have been uh, asking interesting and intriguing and, and hard-hitting, challenging questions. So uh, fair play questions from Sizzle Biscuit says, what sort of appeal process will be in place for people who are flagged for cheating? So the, the appeal progress we already have in place will be the same process in place. So um, when you say will be, it's already in place. And that is that every single account close has the right to appeal uh, by emailing into uh, support. Title players are actually contacted directly with their closure. So they are actually given a private opportunity uh, before even the public knows about it, given their position and, and their, their accomplishments and often their influence in the chess community and the fact that they do a lot of good, despite maybe this one mistake, we give them that opportunity. But everyone can send in an email. You can live and, and give a, the most detailed appeal you want, explain things. Um, in the most rarest of cases, appeals have led to improvements to not just our algorithm, but our process. Sometimes it wasn't the algorithm's fault, but somebody who was on our team who was maybe new and misread something, right? Sometimes it has led to a, a, a massive breakthrough in terms of how we evaluated something that the, that the algorithm or the engines were telling us. So we encourage anyone who thinks they were cheated wrongly to appeal. Also know that a lot of appeals get declined. The first response is then to give us a, an explicit proverbial uh, middle you know what. And then often after a couple months later, they come back and say, you know what, you were right. I was angry. I'm sorry. Uh, we've had some really interesting cases, people saying things like, I, I don't cheat on my wife. I don't cheat on my taxes. And I certainly don't cheat at chess. That person admitted to cheating a few months later. And um, so maybe he needs to have some tougher discussions in his life. Okay, we move on. Ross Wes asks, can I ask about sandbagging? I'm really glad you brought this up. Not just sandbagging in terms of the accounts, but a lot of people are commenting right now. I saw Gotham Chess. I'm not sure if it was related to premium arenas. I, we have another question coming up by, uh, let's see, member GTG Pro 2018 wants to talk about how sandbagging will be determined in premium arenas. So we're already doing that all the time. And obviously it's not the most common form you think of cheating. Usually it's engine cheating in terms of the masses that we close. Um, but we do also close people for sandbagging. It happens sometimes friend on friend action where they try to sandbag with each other. Uh, it does happen sometimes for non-cash prizes, but you know, our members are holding events all the time. You guys are an awesome community. You're holding your own club championships, your own daily chess events, your own live chess club championships. And we try to empower you to do that. And sometimes people cheat in your event for no reason. They just did, right? And you're upset about it or your, or your community members are in your club. And we get reports about that and we act on it, right? Uh, I would say the amount of auto detections we have for sandbagging is obviously less because the much greater part of our investment goes into the statistical um, measurements and, you know, the thresholds and algorithms that we're trying to establish with catching the most sophisticated forms of cheating, frankly, the more important ones. But we do act on sandbagging. And I'll say this. If anyone is caught having sandbagged over this last month, anybody put it this way. If you win a prize in a premium arena, you can know that you are going to be under massive scrutiny and no one will actually get that cash out prize until we have reviewed their games in great detail, not just the history of their account, 
but everything about them. So if you plan on winning a cash prize and you're not a clean playing premium member, good standing member of our community, you're probably not going to get that cash prize. And instead, you'll probably just expose yourself to some things that you were doing uh, in, in, in a shady way. So to answer your question, think about it this way. Not only can I make this promise to you, people have asked that, of course I can make this promise because we're not going to start paying people cash who are gaming you and us. So there's only a few cash prizes each week. Don't game the system because you're going to be caught. Um, let alone, even if you come close to winning, we'll probably catch you. So yeah, of course we are. For the premium arena, how do you plan to prevent people? Okay, this is the same sort of thing. Um, we're already monitoring it. We're monitoring um, the fact that once people play in this premium arena, we will be doing a check of what their rating has been for the last month. So if someone has gone from 1,600 to 1,100 in the last month, maybe we don't know it about right now. You're right. But we're going to know when he plays in the premium arena. And that might not be something that allows him to win a prize, he or she. Um, does cheat detection happen for all rated games from Chess Society? Someone asked a similar question, which is, do we actually check all, let's say, 5 million games played versus uh, human beings every day? I would say we don't necessarily check the verse computer games, because by definition, it's versus computer. But, um, and, and if you decide you want to do that, you're kind of cheating yourself. It's there for your training. But do we check all 5 million games every day? Within the best of our ability, I can say that that's one of the major investments of the tech, right? The tech is about... You know, it takes T1 analysis that everyone's, you know, self-proclaimed cheat experts are doing on Reddit and everywhere else. Some of them are very good. I'm not trying to make fun. But, you know, it take, I would argue our algorithm goes way beyond that. That's where a lot of the investment goes. But also the investment goes into how do we improve and catch people that are blatantly cheating faster, quicker, better, stronger. We're doing that all the time. Um, we are, I mean, I guess our monthly reports say how many games we're reviewing in a month. So let's see, if we review 94 million in March uh, for, uh, for fair play, clearly, um, okay, what's uh, 5 million times 30? That's 150 million, if I'm doing my math right. So clearly we did not review every game. I, I cannot claim that, but we are reviewing a lot of them. And then uh, we continue to review games, especially as they relate to tournaments and sensitive events um, all the time. So that's, that's the best way I can answer that. Um, Four Pants says... The cheat detection system, do we contact other websites? Because some of my opponents have used other websites at the same time. I, I can't say exactly how well we can track because that would be revealing some of the cool stuff we can do under the hood. We can track very much what's going on on other sites and whether someone is using other sites at any time. Um, with a separate device or mid-game on the same device, whatever. We can do we can do that, and we do do that. We do not share uh, what our, our algorithm does with us. It is not like an open-source collaboration. We've talked about it a lot. I, I, I don't know that ultimately that's not in Chess.com's future. Um, I can tell you that both Eric and I, the, the current leadership, if, if we are still the leaders at Chess.com in five years, we hope to be, um, that may be something that we consider to make more and more out there. I'll, I'll say this. The reason we don't is not just for, like, you know, protecting our investment that we're doing with chess.com specific events. We do have to make sure our algorithm is as awesome as it can be for our events. We can't always worry about every other site as much as we'd like to. But also right now, you know, we are not operating in the perfect realm that I would feel comfortable being more public about it because I don't want cheaters to know the very, very few areas that make it harder for us, right? And so um, that's, that's why we don't do that as far as sharing it openly. It's, it's more, and maybe someday, maybe someday we will, um, you know, um, we want to make sure everyone has safe chess, as they say. We have safe chess coming your way. That's our goal. Was I allowed to make that joke? Maybe that we're going to continue. Okay. EO Ghoul says, does chess.com legit report every single game? So we talked about that. As far as the amount of games, I showed you. We went over 94 million in March. Not all 150 million, roughly, but pretty, pretty good. Um, Bradley Bloom says, wants to know, changes in cheat detection will change the number of title players caught. You're darn right it is. And it's unfortunate. How do you know that cheating was getting worse even given the cheat detection method? Was it che that, that cheating was getting worse given the... Th that's a fair point. Um, I, I wasn't... I'll put it this way. We're offering more opportunities and reasons of motivation to cheat because we're investing more. More people are playing chess online than ever. So I guess by the sheer numbers and some of the sensitive stuff I've gone through this week, frankly, having conversations with people that wouldn't normally cheat. That's why I said and acknowledged you guys. I was pretty nervous to talk about this. Like, it's upsetting. It is. It's, very, it's, it's literally the most difficult part of my job. And I think often and daily about how I could get somebody else to do this. And then ultimately it comes around to, you know, kind of the sensitive nature of it, how much we care and how personal we want to give people time that 
and, and a lot of people do do, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't even handle them. I mean, our cheat detection team does so much more work than I do, and people do handle a lot of sense of conversations. But in terms of some of the big ones that I've had or big closures we've had to make, it's not the fun part of my job. Um, and um, I don't know that it's getting worse. I, I've just had more of those conversations. And the fact that we've made some breakthroughs, you're right. You're right. It, it's, it's, uh, it's something that has us acting uh, very strongly on and being d upset. And that's why we're being more outspoken, because we do want to change the culture. I'm unhappy with the culture as it exists. And we don't want people to think that cheating is, is, is something that they can do and get away with, even for a little bit, let alone you know, for a while. And so um, maybe our algorithm breakthroughs are just something exposing a light that's already been there. Either way, the light is being exposed. So let's hopefully change that behavior. Brandon, Brandon Atterbury uh, asks, as we move into more official rated play occurring online, are we gonna, going to get USCF online ratings integrated on profiles? That is a great feature request. I can tell you we're already working on it with FIDE ratings in terms of our player. You ever been to chess.com slash, what is it? Chess.com slash players or something? Can we go there real quick? Let's go to the full screen mode. Do, do, do. I don't even know where it's at. Top players, there it is. Top players. Um, you know, we already have profiles that link to everything that is their chess.com, everything profile, uh, but also uh, we're integrating ways that people's standard profile will also be able to be integrated with their FIDE rating and, and be up to date. So it's not just someone comes on and says, hey, I'm 2900 FIDE, bro. Ugh. Right. And we know they're lying. It'll be. A, so we're working on that. And why not do it with USCF? So great question, Brandon Atterbury. I will add that to Eric's favorite list. It's called the feature list for 2027 when he gives me everything I want. He never tells me no anymore. He says, Danny, I'll do that. 2027. I hope Eric's listening right now. I speak for the people, Eric. You will give us what we want. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's see. Okay, this is a good question. I'm glad we already shared the full screen. We'll be going back to it. Max M. Linick, uh, I know you, you're a mod of ours. We love you, man. Can I save OTB classical games on chess.com to make a personal database? Yes, you can, and I'll show you. And this tool is getting better and better, but I'll show you what you can currently do. Um, and uh, when a Live 960 game occurs, um, what, var what variant statistics would be available? So that's a very good question. Uh, offering game report statistics for any sort of chess variant is like is on that 2027 roadmap. It'll come sooner than that. But we're still trying to make our awesomeness of what key moments can we give you? How can we help you get better with great insights into your games with the game report? Right now, we've got so much attention there. It's hard for me to also say, how can I make someone a better bug house player or chess 960 or anything else? Obviously, on that list, chess 960 comes first. It's the first variant. But it's just it's not something we're doing in this exact moment. Um, let me talk about how you can actually save games over the board. So let's, um, let's go to full screen here. Look at that guy talking on the homepage. We'll get away from that guy. Um, okay, the chess.com analysis. Let's go, let's go to an article. So let's see. We'll grab. Did you know you can grab the PGN and analysis for any article? You just hit this little share button. It's kind of small, but it brings up anything you could ever want. We'll grab the PGN. So here's the deal. The same way you can enter what I'm about to do, which is just copy a PGN and click load, you can also do the same for any manual game, right? When you're done with an analysis, you can make any kind of new analysis and you can enter moves yourself, right? So you can do, enter, you're entering games from your over the board event, right? You're making comments and saying like, you know, I should have not played that, whatever, right? You're done. And when you're done with anything you're either manually entering, copying from somewhere, you can also convert any game you've already played into this. You can save it. And a lot of people don't know, you already have the ability after saving it to see every saved analysis you've ever done. So if you're looking for a list of your, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it, your collection, your library of things, we already have that. And there's actually some analyses here that I've actually done um, for videos that I did because I use chess.com's analysis tool. Let's see if I can find one. You can see these are videos I've done like for our YouTube channel. What's one with some, okay. So here's one where I, I analyze this. These are all my comments. So this is a saved game, Danny's game. In fact, if I copy this link, I can actually share this game instantly with every member of the world, either on social media or the global chess community. Guess what I just did? 
I just gave everybody my private analysis on Chess TV right there. And you can click that link and go there, right? So a lot of people don't know that. There are other sites that have similar features to this, right? A lot of people don't. It, obviously, it's not called the same. We know Lee Chess has studies. Chessable has some great stuff. I know that all kinds of great... Chessbase is really the original you know, organization and database software that a lot of people use. So if you don't have Chessbase... For my money, it's still the best. I'm maybe not supposed to say that, but it's the truth. Chess base is awesome. But I can make any analysis I want. I can do whatever I want. I can make any comments I want. I can then save that analysis and then always have it in my saved analysis folder. And we're only going to continue to work on this and make it even more awesome for you. So if you didn't know that, you can... Here's something that's cool. Look at this. I can go to my archive. Where's my archive? Oh, yeah, it's under play. Okay, I go to my archive. Let's see. I played a horrible game. This guy, oh, I actually was more accurate than this guy. It does my game report here. I click game report. So I've got this game report. I, I got my own analysis. I want to analyze like bishop c4 was dumb. Like, like Danny, like Danny, you're dumb. Danny, you are dumb, bro. Right? And then I click update, right? Once I update, I'm saving that analysis. Guess where it's saved? Now do I not only have a link, but if, I, if it's saved, you know, and I can do whatever else I want, right? Make new variations. And whenever I update and save it, it'll be in my saved analysis right there at the top. Guess what I can also do to that? I can edit the analysis and say, stateofchess.com cheating show where I said things I might regret later. Boom, daddy. Why am I typing? Okay, there you go. Click enter. Okay, and I can save anything I want for a future analysis session. So, all right, we'll get out of this now. But again, maybe you didn't know that. And uh, if you didn't, now you know that you can use chess.com's analysis, save anything you're doing, do anything you want. You can share that with anybody if you want. No one can access your saved analysis. That's private. That's like your own little area, right? But if you ever want to share it, you can. Um, and there you go. Hope, uh, hopefully you like that. So, um, okay. Nivon7714 says... Will there be an FM, not IM, speech chess champion? We have gotten a lot of requests from National Masters, FIDE Masters, and others who do the same thing. I don't know that's, what, that's something we're going to do. Not because it doesn't sound awesome. And maybe we will do it as like uh, maybe a slightly a community-ran event. Uh, maybe, you know, chess.com can provide a prize fund. It's not about the money necessarily. It's just that um, the I'm not a GM thing has actually, has actually been something that was requested secretly for years. It also is a secret excuse to let me lose in front of thousands of people. People love that, right? And I think that a lot of those IMs are also kind of known as chess personalities. And it's not to say that some of the FMs and NMs aren't known as like more chess commentators or whatever. But the I'm not a GM speeches championship was a little bit of kind of meant to be like failed GMs who like kind of be self like to like to self-deprecate, make fun of Lawrence Trent, all that stuff, right? Everyone loves doing that. So that's what that was about. And a lot of those players are kind of known as faces of commentary. So it's not something we always thought of doing as like a regular event for other levels. Not I, I don't know yet. Maybe, right? Maybe. We might even do a Potser speech chess championship. If you're a Potser, raise your hand. I'm a Potser. Can I play? Right? Maybe we'll do something like that. Who knows? Uh, we always have lots of fun doing stuff with you guys. So, uh, But there are no plans yet. Chess Sky wants to know, will there be more classical time controls events on chess.com? For those of you who don't know about the Sunway Sitkiss, can we just take a moment to appreciate that? Um, the, uh, the Sunway Sitkiss, which I'm going to pull up real quick in our news. Do, 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 do. Here it is. The Sunway Sitkiss was the first ever online classical event. Everyone was proctored. I'm going to be totally honest with you because title players always want to know, and that's the whole, uh, I always say I'm going to be totally honest with you. Why do I even say that? I'm always honest, and I shouldn't be saying that. And the problem is that, you know, I'm saying too much. But I'm going to tell you, there were some fair play violations in this event. So you can know you were protected, and we closed them. But also, we also went through all the measurements and protocols that I promised we do during this event. Our team works super hard. Shout out to Simon, who has literally been putting in extra hours to keep, keep our community happy. Um, this event had everyone on Zoom. It was the first ever classical event held with like prizes and things that matter. It was kind of, it was kind of groundbreaking. It wasn't FIDE classical rated. FIDE wouldn't you know, go for that at this point in time, I don't think. It wasn't USA, but it was a classical event on chess.com and it was kind of a big deal. And it's still going, I think. I think. Um, anyway, so that's that. Um, 
Chess in black and white. When will there be lessons aimed at 1,800 or 2,000 players? Great question. We are working on it. I would argue there already are some video series that have been converted to lessons. So chess in black and white. I'm not sure you really know that, but I mean, let me show you real quick in our, in our full feature again. Let me just show you. Our videos, for example, right here, are, I just clicked on, I clicked on Anatoly Karpov's top five moves. Right? This is a video series. Okay. Did you know that right on the right here, it says, it says, try the lesson. Any videos you now watch on chess.com, you can try a lesson. And this, this is, you, is instantly a lesson. Start the challenges. This is a lesson geared at you. I don't even know that I can find the move here. One of five. What did Karpov, what ingenious move did Karpov play to prevent Black from contesting and control the A file? Um, he played this move. I remember this game. Oh, it is I, your old Uncle Sasha. Welcome back. Uh, how should white prepare to double rooks on the A file? Clearly, it's bishop c2. So this is a lesson with videos by Simon Williams with, with lessons. So chess in black and white. There are lessons that are geared toward you, and you should use them and enjoy them. Um, okay. Josh Rod. Any plans for another Komodo versus human event? In fact, it's already in the works. We just had Komodo versus David Smearden. Komodo versus Alex Lenderman is coming in May. I'm just going to answer it that way because we've got a lot of questions here. Already answered that. Any plans for Title Tuesday to be 10 rounds again or even more than that? Yes. Um, there are changes coming to the Title Tuesday format to, again, bigger prizes. Um, Maybe more rounds. Maybe something we learned from the Abu Dhabi Blitz Championship, which was $10,000 and for a single-day event, the most we ever had, in terms of the final stages being a knockout. I'm not going to say more about that, but we are working on things for the title Tuesday. It should make even, even those who are still very critical of our fair play, you know, despite my whole message today, not to say that my message should matter, but you know, we did give you a lot and talk to you about our philosophy in terms of losing some mini PR battles to some of you who think, you know, we're not acting fast enough, but winning the war and continuing to invest and make sure we do catch cheaters. So we're not going to stop. And we think the title Tuesday with some format changes might be even better for some of you that are still critics of fair play and what chess.com does to catch cheaters. So look for that coming soon. Chess TV, are engines allowed to be used for personal friend to friend games from Makula G, uh, M-A-C-A-U-L-J. Um, they are not. Now, I will say this. We have had this happen, and in cases where both friends wrote in and both friends appealed and said we were aware of this, we have dealt with them cooperatively to not consider it be cheating. But sometimes this excuse is made, and it's not totally honest. And even if that's the case, it's not something that is necessarily approved. Um, we have talked a lot about creating our own sort of pool of players who want to do that. It's actually called Centaur Chess. If you didn't know, it's actually a thing. And there are some people who are very good at Centaur Chess. There are Centaur Chess world champions, people who play openly me and my favorite engine versus you and your favorite engine. It leads to some fascinating chess. I got to be honest, I'm a fan. Like the Computer Chess Championship, these are brilliant Leela games we're seeing versus Stockfish. Check out my videos on YouTube, shameless plug. Um, some of the computer games, if you dismiss that they draw 75 in a row, they come up with brilliant wins like that bishop ending, right, that are just like blow all of us away. Uh, but Centaur Chess is also a thing. It is not something we currently openly endorse on Chess.com. We're working on it. Um, Eric has it on his feature list for 2027. Just kidding. It'll be sooner. Steffi94 wants to know what's happening with the Pro Chess League finale. It has been moved to September. Because of COVID-19, the organizers and sponsors that we have there um, worked with us so that we didn't have to kind of completely cancel it. Um, depending on where the world goes, maybe it would have actually been possible at the end of May. I don't know what's going to happen with COVID-19 like all of you. I, and I think it might just depend on the region you're in. People might start making more individual decisions on that. Um, but we moved it to September anyway. And um, that is when the Pro Chess League Finals will happen live in Oslo. You should be there. It's going to be an amazing chess esports finale. Um, the Beamuth wants to ask, assuming that you have been putting the time to actually improve in chess and thus increase your rating from 12 to 1500 in the span of 12 months, will your cheating algorithm take into effect that the player could have actually improved his games? So that's a very good question because it leads to one of the most common mis misconceptions. And you're going to love this answer, Beamuth. Anyone who cares about our cheat detection, this is going to give you more insight. Our cheat detection is result and rating blind in that 
And this, this will be frustrating for people who think of it old school, but then ultimately hopefully illuminating and encouraging because this is why I can claim we don't ever act in a mob mentality. I hate when people come to me and say, this person can't be this good. You don't know. You don't know who the next Magnus Carlsen is. People say like, this person can't improve that or this person could never find that tactic. People play brilliant chess games all the time. Plus, how is it that you can hold it against somebody that by definition of playing a great game, they did match up with an engine a few times, right? It assumes that you believe we're placing labels on people and we're saying this person can't win against this guy. This person's not capable of that. Completely not what we do. Now, when it comes to manual review, there are results that catch your eye. And sure enough, anybody is a human being. And if someone has an outstanding result, we wouldn't be doing our job to protect and serve you if we didn't look into that, right? So certainly results might be a trigger point of why we look into you. But we would never and have never closed. In fact, so many people that have tried to trick us in their, in their confession emails, you just don't know who I am. I've just gone from 12 to 1800 this month. I'm telling you all that stuff. And this is a show of being super direct, so I'm staying with the tone, is total BS. And we know it. It doesn't matter because our, our algorithm is matching up the blueprint of your game to what we have measured and know is possible for human beings to match up with engines in all kinds of ways. And I can't say exactly, there's so many different ways we do that, but it puts together what we call our cheat report. And it takes, it takes top move matchup combined with... Um, what am I allowed to say? Be careful, Danny. I know Roland's watching. Um, it takes top move analysis combined with obviously activity of your device, but also it takes the murder weapon really out of it. It's, it's device blind as well, because we know based on our investment, the fact that we have analyzed millions and millions of games. I would tell you this. We knew certain people were cheating in over the board events long before FIDE or the USCF did. And you could say, well, why didn't you do something about it? Well, again, remember, that's not really our jurisdiction. Right. And when asked privately, we always assist and help. We want safe chess, as I said, practice safe chess. Um, but but our job is to, the reason we have nine full time employees on salary. Right. Is because is because their job is to constantly be measuring, inputting data, pulling out information, finding ways that we can see patterns of irregular irregularity. Um, what the IOC does, it measures not just whether someone has a high, uh, you know, white blood cell or oxygen count in their blood, but it also knows what their normal level of blood is. And that's the best I can tell you in terms of what we're doing all the time is investing here for you. And we are not making uh, subjective opinions. And that's where we have to act in a way that is a little bit harder than everyone else who gets to act and just say, this person couldn't do this, or this person's outperforming their rating. Even GMs, it's often wrong. Often people are wrong and that sometimes people will be surprised that people will be closed for cheating because their result was not as good as you would think. But uh, maybe, they, maybe they're not good at balancing the engine device they're accessing. Maybe they get themselves under time pressure and still lose, right? Our algorithm is measuring what you're doing that is not appropriate in terms of assistance and it, it, is not, it is not ever holding results or your chest strength against you. It's one of the biggest illusions. And again, that's one of the things we feel good about. So you can trust we're not going to hold it against you if you have a great event. But if you had a great event and cheated and then try to tell us privately, no, you just don't know how good I am, we're going to see right through it. Because it's not how we were measuring you anyway. It wasn't about your result. It's about the indications that your moves gave us in terms of what we know is humanly probable for people to do. Not possible, but probable, right? And that's the, that's the way we can act. And, and the best I can describe that is if, if you were in court and you said, I just lifted that 1,300 pound refrigerator with one hand. And a guy's like, no, you didn't. And you're like, yeah, I did. You can't prove I'm wrong. And he's like, well, do it again. And you're like, nope, I can't prove you wrong. And I can't, and you don't have to prove that you can do it again. But guess which one of us wins in a court of law in terms of the way our current legal system works? It's the reason it's called beyond reasonable doubt is because you're never measuring the impossibility of things. But we do a great job of measuring the improbability, and we do it with integrity because we're constantly measuring the chances we might be wrong. Okay. You're not doing statistics with integrity unless you're also keeping yourself in check. So we're not just screaming on a, on, a, on a rooftop or crying wolf when people have great results. If I put this hand super close to the camera, you might say it's a hand. You might say it looks like a baby's butt. 
You might say it looks like a hamburger bun. It's not until the hand becomes clear that you actually know what you're seeing in statistics, right? You have to have enough information to really understand and measure with integrity. And that's the realm that we operate in. And so the best way to consider it is we're not trying to make false accusations. We're trying to make accusations we can stand by, being conservative, but also protecting all of you. And so without getting into more things, I've probably already said too much that are indicators of the type of statistical methods we use. Some of them are well-known, some of them are not. Some of them are a combination of well-known stuff that people just haven't, other people don't do yet. But that's what we're doing. And we're doing it to measure the probability of, of impossibility. The probability of impossibility never excludes the possibility of an anomaly. I sound like Neo. Man, I'm like the architect in the Matrix or something. Okay, the probability of a possibility never excludes the probability that the possibility could be an anomaly. So there's always the chance of an anomaly, but there isn't the chance that we win in court that, that we would act on it, meaning we would only do it if we know what we're doing and we're measuring, is this a baby's butt? Is this a hand? Is it not? And as soon as we know that's a baby's butt, you can bet that we uh, put some powder on that baby. This, this, uh, this reference got way out of control. Moving on. Um, here we go. Please post the open letter from Smizlov Fan. We will be sending the letter in chess.com messages from yours truly. It's already written. Uh, at Macau Lijay, again, the same guy from Chess TV says, what is chess.com doing about those who are pushy and making a move in under 10 seconds, for example, in chess that are 30 to 60 minutes? I have been having a ton of them online. I'm just a beginner. So again, there's different, all I can say is there's different feelings on that. Some people really feel that it's unfair to start a game when we should be focused and you're not moving. Some people want you to be aborted in that process. Others want time to think. We're always trying to hear the community and what they want. Different time controls have different restraints of how much leniency we give you. Like if someone hasn't made a move in bullet, I think in like 30 seconds, we consider that half the time control and the game should end, right? In longer games, you're given a lot more time and leniency to think about your first move. In 960 games, you're given more time. That's our job. We're working all the time. I'm sorry if it's not perfect. We, we, we're doing what we can to measure that. Um, I would say that if someone is complaining to you and being rude, Diamond member Macal J, you should report them. You know that you can click on any profile and report that person? Let's show everybody how you do that. Let's show everybody how we report somebody for abuse, huh? Let's do it, huh? We go into live chess, and I click on a game. Hold on. Loading, right? We've got Gavix, and I'm like, hey, Gavix, I don't like the way you're adding here. I click on him, and I can click on more or even just the button right there. I can report anybody. I can report them for abuse for stealing, for cheat, for stalling, or oh, not stalling, not stealing, yeah, not stealing, <laughs> for stalling. He, he stole my rating points by beating me. <laughs> I can report for verbal abuse for, for anything, right? Did you know that you can do that? Again, I'm gonna show you again. Click on any username and click the report button and tell us what's bothering you and we will do everything we can to act. So there you go, that's that full screen. On to the next question here. Um, E4, B, a whole bunch of letters, E4, B, C4, Queen, H5, Queen, F7. Oh, that's the form of checkmate. Cool username. Do the monthly reviews consider variance? We do catch people for cheating in variance. People cheat less in variance. The communities are smaller and more loyal. That's just, just so you know, it's true. So if you're a variant player, a little bit of badge of pride for you. People cheat less in variance. One, it's harder to cheat in variance. Also, there aren't as many engines for it. But also, I think the communities are smaller and more tight-knit. Um, we do check for cheating, like four-player chess, as you said. And, and all I can say is, yes, we are, but, um, you know, the, the closures are obviously going to be less extreme. Um, like that number I gave you of 5 million live chess games played every day, that doesn't inc even include four-player four chess variants, right? I don't even know how many four-player four player chess variants we've had over the last month and a half. In 2020, the, uh, the second World Teams Championship final four-player chess stream, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay, blah, blah, okay. Uh, featuring three title players and was won by a team led by Konenko. Four-player chess. Oh, so this is just an advertisement of four-player chess. Apparently, this guy has an agenda. Apparently, check out fourplayerchess.com. I'll, I'll give him his due. Let me just show you. You go under play, and you can go to four-player chess. If you didn't know, I was very addicted to four-player chess for some time. It's a ton of fun. It's awesome. Um, it's also a bit, um, a bit nutty and exhausting, and my brain hurts, and so I stay away from it. Okay. Um, hands, hands pans live as a programmer. How can I apply for the fair play team? You can email, e email, email. I'm talking a lot here. I need to take a breath. It's been an intense show. You can email fairplay at chess.com. I said it correctly. 
Um, we also have chess.com slash jobs. If you're not aware, we're always hiring. Our company's expanding. We have more than 150 full-time employees now. Uh, we provide health care and dental. We, we provide bonuses all around the world to everyone who works there. We, we do everything we can to help our team and our employees be happy. Our, our company is doing what it can. So if you're interested in working for us, we're interested in, in considering you. So go ahead and apply at chess.com slash jobs. How's that for a big chess statement? Good job, Dan. BJH says, have you considered adding international variants such as Shogi and Shang-Chi to chess.com? I don't even know what those are, BJH. I love you. Thank you for all the work you've been doing here today. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. I, kn I know what uh, Shogi is. Um, no, we have not. I'll let Eric know. That'll be added to the list of 20 27 along with every other variant that people want and everything else that we want. Um, okay. Danny Wrench, can you please make more live streams of you playing I Like You streaming? Well, I like you, Amazing Master. Thanks for the request. Um, NF Chess 13, is there a chess.com desktop app for Windows on the roadmap? Not currently. Um, I got to be honest, we, we have a very, very small Windows development team that often gets pulled into other areas. The, the Android and iOS market share dominate the market, and I hate to sound like a businessman who has to make sound decisions, but I'm a businessman who has to make sound decisions along with Eric and, and the whole team here. And right now the market share is just not big enough. So if you have a Windows phone, that's awesome. But we just don't have enough people using our site uh, with those apps to justify it right now. So hopefully the web interface is okay with you. Or, um, and I don't, I don't want to encourage you to go iOS or Android because I don't really care. I love, you know, but it's just, it's not something that we're doing right now. And I'm sorry. Um, at Lonigan says, I enjoy watching Daniel Wrench commentating on chess.com and wish, okay, cool. Thank you. Good humor and gameplay. That's just a cool comment. Thank you. Um, that's Lonigan. Appreciate that. Mine SS says, will chess.com make online titles like chess.com master? That is a fantastic question. One that has been long considered, debated, and ultimately sometimes when you don't know what to do, you do nothing, which is obviously why you can see we have not done that yet. There's a lot of different opinions on that. Um, I will share some general opinions we've gotten from a lot of experts of other games and esports communities, and um, you might really like this, so I'll tell you. A lot of people, so um, I don't know that we're not going to do it. I don't know that we will do it. Why haven't we done it yet? Well, one of the things that makes chess so uh, amazing is not just that it's a legacy game, been around since 600 AD, but it's also a game that was here way, so obviously the legacy of it and even the hierarchy of it was here way before online chess, right? And when, when FIDE and the, the organizational entities began to establish official rating systems that led to titles, it actually did an amazing thing for chess. That's, you know, I know FIDE takes a lot of heat, as they should, frankly, for some of the things and decisions that are made. But one of the most important functionalities and purposes they serve is, to, is structure and something that people recognize very easily easily and know how good somebody is, not just by their rating, but by their title. In fact, the term grandmaster, right, is instantly associated with chess. And that then it gets used into other genres. Like he's a grandmaster, you know what it means, right? And when someone says you're a master, a chess master, you know instantly what that means. There's no like that guy's a Fortnite master. That guy's a Smash Bros. this. Everybody's like, dude, I'm pretty good at Smash Bros. Like, you want to throw down? Well, I was better at the N64. Like, I like the bigger paddle. Like, the, the GameCube sucked, right? Can we all agree on that? And now, now I play Smash Bros. on the Wii U, or, and I love it. Anyway, wait, 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 wait. So, but here's the thing. According to all of you, you are the best Smash Bros. player in the world. And here's what that's actually led to. I've heard this from all our partners at Twitch and a lot of experts in the eSport industry. That has actually led to utter chaos. Because when you end up going to major events, people don't really know who the best are. They don't. And they don't know that the person claiming it isn't as good as they say they are. Now, streaming has helped some of that because it's provided motivation for people who are good at games to then bring it to the public and get good. It, there has been a sort of an unofficial hierarchy established on Twitch and gameplay of who the best are at things, right? We can all agree on that. But it's not official. Right? A lot of people think Ninja is the best Fortnite player in the world. And then people who know the game know that he's probably not even in the top 20. Right? And, and the thing is, 
uh, what, so streaming has helped that. The media and the content has helped, but it's still not in official ranking systems. You don't know who the best chess players in the world are. You know who the best chess players, oh, sorry, who the best Fortnite players are. You know who the best chess players in the world are? You know who the best chess player is? His name is Magnus Carlsen. Well, you know who the actual best chess movers are? It's actually Leela and Stockfish, right? You know who the, because their ratings are 3,500. So um, the point is this, right? The point is, one of the things that is most respected and understood about the game is a very clear ranking and titling system. At chess.com, we respect and honor that FIDE systems have earned that right. FIDE's rankings and other nationally respected and organized entities have a titling system. And so we acknowledge a candidate master of a given nation or a national master, right? And FIDE has its titles. And we don't necessarily have motivation to undermine it. Despite maybe people's fears or concerns at FIDE or whatever, we have no interest in like becoming the official dumb of chess, right? I mean, we love our site. There are a lot of people who play on chess.com that maybe have never played anywhere else. And that's, and that's awesome. And we're thankful and fortunate. But we're not trying to uproot or undermine the official FIDE ranking systems. And anyone can clip that, please, and send it to FIDE because it's true. Please do. Like, so we honor and acknowledge that rating and titling system. And we don't have interest in undermining it. So to give you a very long-winded answer to the question is, does chess.com have plans for titles? It's a slippery and tricky slope. We've talked about maybe puzzle titles and other things, right? But, but right now, we just want to have a great experience for people to play and learn. And I'm not sure that that's necessary for that. And so that's why we haven't done it yet. I think there's cool motivation. It would be cool to have a chess.com title. That's why, um, that's why M N I N S S asked, right? So I get it. I'm not trying to degrade the answer, right? But that's why we haven't. And it's not as easy as you would think as far as what the real purpose of it is. And there you go. So hopefully that helps. Someone send that, you know, so I don't know. Wait, hold on a second. Oh, Before man. you move on. You, you, you scared me. Gonna... I forgot my producer was here. Shout out to Aaron who's helped me with this sweet ass uh, PTI looking setup here. Go ahead. You think you're going to get away with saying the GameCube was a bad system? Wow. Are we really bringing up the GameCube? The most forgotten about game system of all time besides Sega Genesis? Um, no, I'm not a gamer. So do you really like GameCube? Dude, we're going to, we're going to talk about this. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be educated later about Nintendo's gaming hierarchy. Um, we have the one now, me and my kids. What's the one where you can take it with you? The Wii? The Switch. The, the Switch. Switch. We the Switch. have the Switch right now. You know, you called a controller like a paddle the other day, a right? I, it, I call a, a, uh, a clicker, a remote control channel changer. I don't know. I'm a dad, Oren. Leave me alone. All right, here we go. Um, Sam Copeland, I know that guy, asks, what's your most anticipated feature on the 2027 feature list, Dan? Oh, man. Whew. What has Eric put on the 2027 feature list that, um, that I can even say out loud? Um, I, obviously, that's a joke. Thank you for that. Uh, we're doing everything we can to make everybody happy all the time. It's not that simple. And uh, forgive us. So um, if we're not giving you your features you want right away. At Justin's says, is there a way to make your online games private so they can't be used by other players for preparation? So, good question. Um, currently, no. But if you saw what I showed you earlier, which is chess.com, excuse me, version of, um, you know, saving analysis and organizing your own files, right? I say lead chess studies because people use that as well. A lot of people use our analysis. Um, I know that people create repertoires in chess base. Uh, those are three very common things. The databases in chess base are great. So let's say those are three versions of it. Let me share our screen again and just remind you, this is only going to be getting better and better. But, um, you know, our analysis tool does allow you to save anything you want, um, in analysis, so let's see, Oop, load, oops, well, we'll go here, we'll just save a link that I gave earlier. The analysis I did for a video I did at one time, Magnus Carlson, Wesley So. So in my saved analysis kind of list, I have a lot of things. This is private, and you can do anything you want here. Maybe you can share it if you want, but you can add any notes to your games and make them private. We have been a, a kind of a proponent of public information in the sense that we believe your game archive is public territory. So anyone can see Danny Wrench's archive, right? If we go to the, my profile, um, and let's see, like we can go to Hikaru's profile, right? Anyone can see Hikaru's games. If I want, I can see all of Hikaru's recent games, right? Um, I can see that I've actually won 11 times against Hikaru and lost 55 times. Did you know that? Or no, no, I've won 10 times. Okay, good, I didn't even, uh, okay, I didn't even know that, right? Um, so we believe that those who have tried to lock down chess experiences, um, like Aegon, to, to speak of, you know, you know, 
all the direct things we do on this show. It's what the state of chess.com is all about. Others that have tried to lock down PGNs is not necessarily in the realm that we want to operate in. Public games are public information. Um, and PGNs are portable game notation, and we believe that. And, and now what you do with that game, you add your own thoughts and analysis. Now you put your own intellectual property into it, right? And that, that canon should only be shared at your discretion. I will say this. People have requested a lot. And Justin Z, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You're probably only asking because you're a serious chess player, so we get that. Um, if people have requested uh, privately, we have, we have allowed title players to have a second anonymous account, a second secret account. Account duplication, multi-accounts is not something we allow on chess.com. It is a version of fair play violation. So that is not me telling you that everyone here can go make a second account. It's not within our rules. But obviously we know that millions of accounts are created every year here on chess.com. Some of them are duplicates. And in order to kind of help the process of title players who do want to play secretly, we have given them usernames they can keep secret until they wish to make it public. Um, now what we've done with those accounts to protect other guys like Hikaru, who he's playing publicly all the time. Hikaru, love him or hate him, has to, has to be, you know, he's a, he's a star and gets criticized and, and, you know, people like and dislike him all the time. But his games are all public. You can see his profile. Hikaru doesn't even have a Smurf or Anonymous account on Chess.com unless he's doing a Bond Cloud speed run. But even then it's public, right? Um, the point is, in the interest of protecting guys like Hikaru, if you have an anonymous titled account, we socially disable that account, meaning it's not allowed to be listed on leaderboards. You're not allowed to compete for certain things. You're certainly not, not allowed to compete in cash prizes. So we try to help people like you, Justin Z, to, to prepare for tournaments, to be a professional aspiring player by giving you that opportunity. It is a special exception made for at, at the request, I guess, of a very serious you know, regular premium member who wasn't titled also wanted a second account and says, hey, I'm not titled yet, but I'm 2000 and I also want it. We might say yes to you too. We're not trying to discriminate against non-titled players, but even then it is a process and people have to ask permission. And if we find people multi-accounting, uh, there, are, there are consequences. And so, it, it, you know, we protect the public title players by, by limiting those accounts, and we do allow you the opportunity to do it if you want. So that's what I can say. Otherwise, we believe in the, the chess is public information, and once you play a game, it should be known to the community. So that's my, that's my statement on that. Um, and my statement now is I am exhausted. We have had a, a, a very long show here, a lot of talking for this guy during the state of chess.com. If you appreciate this, and you happen to have been watching this full show um, in, a, in a VOD later somewhere, please leave a comment. Let us know you appreciate it. If you appreciate it, please, you know, in chat, let us know that, um, that, you, that, you, uh, that you like this show. We're going to obviously we do it four times a year, once a quarter. And partly we only do it that often because it's, you know, it's something we, you know, a lot of energy goes into this. This isn't just commentary, but I'm probably more exhausted now than I have been other shows t discussing very hard hitting topics. So we're going to take a very quick break. When I come back, hopefully um, you guys have shared any final questions you have. We're going to pick a few more final questions. Probably the Chess TV chat gets a little bit of favoritism, but we'll check out YouTube and Twitch too. So if you have any remaining questions, now's your time. Otherwise, final thoughts wrapping up today. When we return, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. Final thoughts from today's show here. The State of Chess.com quarter one edition in the year 2020 continues here with some final questions I want to get to first before giving some final thoughts. Um, Fisher Rook, who asked earlier whether we do have um, more lessons and challenges coming. We do, and we're adding to them all the time. And as I pointed out, and so I'll say it again in case it wasn't noted again, let me just navigate one more time and show you that a lot of people don't know that our videos are lessons now. Every video series we do has an opportunity to try the lesson over here on the right. So you can find it via videos if you're a video watcher first. Or if you're a lessons doer first, obviously you can go to lessons and know that, yep, I know, know that any lesson you do, let's, let's just go to the mastery, the mastery course. Actually, I, I'll just go to the, uh, let's see, where can I get a list of all different lessons? We'll get, uh, let's see, miscellaneous. We'll just go there just to see. Uh, we're, adding, we're adding lessons all the time. So if we're talking about, uh, you know, playing like a world champion, right? We have play like a lot of different people on, on chess.com as far as lessons go. You know, we, we added, uh, sorry, I clicked on the user instead of the actual lesson. Um, we're adding lessons all the time. Great games, you know, to learn from previous champions of the past, right? Why is that not the solution? Oh, you have to do this first. Okay. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter, but cool. Um, and then it's got to be this one, right? And then knight h3. Cool. Cool. Little combo. I solved it. Awesome. So we're adding things all the time. Maybe the best way to pay attention to whatever new lessons there are is to pay attention to whatever new video series we release because those are, those are converter to lessons. There is also a redesign coming to the lessons page that's going to make it a little bit easier for you to be updated and navigate every time there is a new lesson. So yes, Fisher Rook, it's coming. Um, at Mac Al, again, same guy, Chester V says, I'm noted. Thank you. I know I've said it a few times, but thank you very much for all you do. Thank you. And I appreciate that. I really appreciate it. And, um, it's nice, it's nice to, uh, to do it. We're very lucky. I feel very fortunate and nice to have your support. Eo Ghoul says, is the format known for the upcoming chess.com club league? It's being worked on as we speak. Sam Copeland is our director of content. He's also kind of leading the way with that. Um, I know that there's more announcements coming to it. So if you run a club, if you happen to be a representative of a federation who wants a club, uh, you should definitely sign up for that. And maybe someone who's familiar with it can share a link in the chat. Eric Do 23 says, uh, Danny, has there been any thoughts of changing the disconnecting rules? I get disconnected and come back in three minutes later in a 10 minute game and the other person wins by disconnection. Seems if I come back in three minutes in a 10 minute game, I shouldn't be aborted. Well, one of the ways to consider that is what about the experience of your opponent, right? Uh, and what if you were that opponent? And um, we, we, have a, we have an algorithm that adjusts. Everybody is given leniency on disconnections. And every time control is different. Like in Bullet, if someone disconnects for more than half the remaining time, there's only one minute to start. Like, what do they have left, right? So, so there's our threshold. In three minute, in five minute, in 10 minute, every threshold is different. And I'm, um, honestly, I don't even remember 100% what it is right now because we do so much here and we decided it a few years ago. And it, it's been overall something that the community is very happy about. So I understand, Eric, do two, three, you're, you're not as happy as we would like. But I would argue that overall, the majority people, people who are in a 10 minute game and you disconnect in the beginning, they're also frozen from playing anybody else while they're waiting for you, right? And even though you could argue, well, they're going to get a win, a lot of people are here to play, not to win, right? So we're hurting the experience of someone who's playing someone who's disconnected if it's longer than that, right? And it's only one game, right? If you came back after disconnecting, you can obviously play another one. And that person wasn't held prisoner for five minutes or seven minutes, if that's what you would like. So, you know, there's a lot to consider with that. We do consider it and we hear you, right? But I don't think it's as easy as only considering the viewpoint of when we're disconnected as it is to consider when other people are waiting for you to return via a bad connection, right? So it's, so that's the best way I can answer that. You know, we have, we have threshold set for every time control. We do our best. If over time we learn that we're doing something wrong, we make adjustments. But that's kind of how we handle that. Um, Race ESSI says, says, can you please, please give us Puzzle Rush for the other variants as well like Crazy House and King of the Hill? Don't we have Puzzle Rush? And Puzzle Battle is literally Puzzle Rush as a chess variant. You're playing it as a game. So I greatly appreciate the request. 
Puzzle Battles is Puzzle Rush as a chess variant. You're literally battling someone puzzle, puzzle, mano y mano. I mean, I think we have that, so I'm, I'm, I'm confused by that question. He, he means like uh, scenarios of Puzzle Rush that are Crazy House, or it, it's a puzzle if you're playing King of the Hill. Like. Ah, that's crazy. Puzzles for variants. Okay, so again, I would say that that's a 2027 feature list. It's interesting, right? I'm, I'm joking, and we always say that that's become the tagline, maybe sooner. But we're still trying to make the experience we can, we can the best it can be for what people are doing millions of times over. And variants are awesome, and the communities that love them are supporting them, and we love them. But that's, that's um, a difficult thing to prioritize right now when there's some other big things you don't know about that are coming just to the current experience that have a lot of our focus. So... Um, same person from YouTube, our race is size, says, can you please, please give, wait, that was the same thing. Okay. A size. Okay. Uh, tr Timmed7 says, DannyChess.com needs to implement a more structured and detail-oriented approach to producing their video lessons. You are 100% right. I actually just said that without even having read your comment. We are working on a redesign for it to make it easier to navigate, easier to search, if anybody on our product team, I know Eric is often too, we know that. And it is, it is literally one of the top priorities and we're working on it. We have so much amazing content just for us that people, people who find them are like, this is the most amazing thing ever. I get to watch a video and then get questions about what I learned. What could be better, right? And other people are like, I didn't even know this existed and I don't know how to navigate it. And when are more coming, right? They don't even know we're actually doing more. Every time we produce a new video, that is a new lesson course. We need to unify and simplify the design here and we're working on it and we got it. Um, so there you go. I see more questions coming in chat. People asking, Danny, can I ask you a question? Which is already a question. Just kidding. No, but seriously, final, final thoughts on today's uh, stateofchess.com now to be given just to say that, um, again, this has been, um, <laughs> fun master Mike says, Danny, how did you get your haircut with everything closed? Am I breaking social distancing measures? My sister is a, um, a licensed, what's it called? A licensed hair cutter? A licensed uh, stylist. stylist. A licensed stylist, beautician, more, more, whatever. Um, and uh, after making sure we were all COVID free and having had been social distancing, she was able to cut my hair. And uh, thank you for that. So I'm very fortunate. Um, thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. I get I, my hair cut on Zoom. Uh, yeah, I also have considered the Zoom haircut. Um, I hear some people have, have done very well with that. So um, a, new, a new business booming, Zoom haircuts. Get your haircut by someone not even at your physical home, just over, over video conference. Um, so uh, again, bigger, bigger thoughts just on today. If you uh, happen to just be tuning in, we discussed a lot of sensitive stuff. We hope that um, our efforts are, you know, just, just known. You know, I don't even want to say appreciating. No, it doesn't matter because people, people express frustration and they express criticism because they're upset and sometimes rightfully so, right? I mean, because while we obviously have to act conservatively before we close people for cheating and, and have the measures we do, it's not your job. You're right. And I wasn't ever asking you to make that your job or to even have compassion for chess.com and the, and the tens of thousands of, of accounts we close for cheating and, and that we are you know, doing a lot for the title player community by investing in prize opportunities. And that does come with some cheating. At the same time, you know, I, I just wanted to explain that is how we view it, right? We are investing a ton. We're doing a pretty good job and much more than people know. That was the point of today's show is to say, if I told you the amount of grandmasters we closed just in the last few weeks, let alone lifetime, let alone confessions, let alone sensitive calls with talented youngsters. And it's not easy. And, and we are doing it. And it's not publicized sometimes by design because we're also not witch hunters. And we're not trying to burn people at the stake. And so we're operating in the best way we can. And hopefully we lead with our actions in terms of our willingness to invest and create opportunities to win money. The premium arena coming up for all of you and, and, and what we do for title players. And we're going to continue to, to close people and operate how we do, knowing that you're going to express frustration like the open letter we received from the title players who may or may not have tuned into today's show or somehow hear about this. And it's not because we don't understand the frustration, but just because we're doing what we can within within our own abilities and within kind of the uh, the the framework we've set up as hopefully the best way to do it, to be both respectful of your peers. And you might be surprised as a title player who screams and wants title players closed, how many of your friends might have been on it. I mentioned there may or may not be some names on that list that are more familiar than you would think, um, I, which we found a little bit ironic with that open letter. I mentioned that there are people that I've you know had to close for cheating, you know, who I know 
you know, and it's um, it's not an easy thing. And I don't think people, when it really gets close to home, always want people to be as burned at the stake as they can claim on social media, right? And so we're doing everything we can. We are doing more than maybe you knew, which was the goal of today's show. And we're going to continue to do it. And um, appreciate your support and your criticism overall. And uh, obviously, there was a lot of other things discussed here today. You know, for those interested in product features and things like that, you can back up and check out the VOD. But that was the major address. Uh, we appreciate you uh, you tuning in. And uh, with that, I'm, g- I'm going to kind of wrap things up here and just say thank you again so much to the team working hard behind the scenes. My producer here, uh, Mr. Mr. R in Hawaii, BJH, who was the main moderator today, helping a lot behind the scenes, pulling out some of the questions when chat was really zooming fast, when we had more than 7,000 of you with us at one point earlier. Uh, we, uh, we were trying to keep chat from all different stuff, and so um, appreciate that. And um, And again... Just thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for giving us the time of, uh, to, to hear our point of view on this. And uh, we will see you in future events here coming up. A lot of big ones coming up, as we said. Can't wait for the Online Nations Cup and our partner organizing it, Fide there and everything else. So thank you again. Signing off here on behalf of Chess.com. And uh, we'll see you with our next show in just a few days.